Which key storylines and training camp battles should you be paying attention to once the Panthers open up camp this week? I'll tell you right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. to another edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Nowhere else can you find Carolina Panthers training camp coverage throughout the weekday than right here on Locked on Panthers. That's why it's so important that you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me over on Twitter, at Julian Council, to get those questions into me now. But first, click that follow button, at Julian Council, over on Twitter. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply we have finally made it it has been a long long off season full of thrills of a new coaching staff one of the best coaching staffs at least on paper in the nfl fingers crossed we hope a new quarterback in bryce young and plenty of other new players here as frank reich has taken over as the head coach in Carolina, and it is a new dawn as the Carolina Panthers once again will head down I-85 South to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and have training camp over there on the campus of Wofford College. On Saturday, Bryce Young and the rookies showed up, and tomorrow the veterans will show up down there at Wofford, and then on Wednesday, the Carolina Panthers will be back in uniform, at least practice uniforms, ahead of the 2023 NFL season. So, folks... We've made it. At least we've made it to this point. We still have some time until we actually get to see real football that matters. Now, we'll get the preseason, and that will be great, those three games. But it's a while until we get to September, where the Panthers will, again, go down I-85 South to Atlanta to face those Falcons in the first game of Frank Reich as the Panthers head coach. And the thought is that Bryce Young will be the starting quarterback as he enters training camp as QB1. On today's show, we're going to talk about the key storylines we got going on in the camp, the key camp battles, and who are some of the players that are on the roster bubble that you should be paying attention to heading in the training camp, which starts, I guess, tomorrow they report, but really on Wednesday is when it all gets going on. So we'll start off with some of the key storylines heading into training camp. I talked about it, Bryce Young and the rookies. They reported to camp on Saturday there at Wofford, and before that happened, the Panthers still had a little bit of business to take care of. We've been talking a lot about Brian Burns and his deal and when it will become, and still to this point, as I record this on Sunday evening to be released to you on Monday morning, Brian Burns is not signing a long-term deal. Neither has Nick Bosa out there in San Francisco. So we're still playing the waiting game of when is Brian Burns going to sign and will he report? All indications are he will, but we'll see how that materializes as we get closer to training camp, which again is only you know tomorrow. But Bryce Young, he was someone who also had not signed his rookie deal yet. Everyone else in the rookie draft class had signed theirs. But Bryce hadn't been that guy just yet until Friday. A nice little news dump by the Carolina Panthers that Bryce Young agreed to a fully guaranteed four-year deal worth $37.96 million with a signing bonus of nearly $24.6 million, which he gets right up front. So congratulations, Bryce Young. You were a very rich man and something that we knew he was going to get. The terms of at least what his deal was supposed to be have been known since he was drafted number one overall as far as his draft slot. It was just some of the other things that need to be tied up like offset language, which delayed it. Bryce Young now has his deal and now he's coming in to camp as QB1. And obviously that's important where in the offseason, we weren't quite sure when Bryce Young would take over the reins as the top quarterback. Would it be in training camp? Would it be after the preseason? Would it be week five? 
now we know, at least it feels like we know, Frank Reich did tell us that you don't know until the pads come on. But so far, Bryce Young has checked every single one of the boxes that the Panthers coaching staff in the front office wanted to see him check once they drafted him and brought him in for rookie mini camp and then OTAs then throughout that to be named as a starter, at least QB1 right now going into mandatory minicamp. And of course, the last six weeks as he's operated as the starting quarterback, having throwing sessions in Dallas. Good to see that. Bryce Young enters camp as, of course, the number one overall pick as QB1 and a guy who has a mountain of expectations primarily placed by the owner, David Tepper, who said Bryce Young gives us the best chance of all the guys who were available at quarterback to help us win Super Bowls. Not one, but multiple Super Bowls here in Carolina. So certainly that is the hope. So the pressure's on Bryce Young, who has had to deal with it since being a high school player at modern day high school back in Los Angeles to going to Alabama to now being the number one overall pick and a guy who's hopefully going to turn this franchise around and be the long-term franchise quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. So Bryce Young has got his deal. He's QB1, and we're all excited to see what that's going to look like this season. Brian Burns, that's the other storyline heading into camp. Will he show up? I expect him to. Joe Burrow, who's going to get paid a ton of money, also showed up there in Cincinnati. Someone who, you know, we're figuring eventually it's gonna get he's gonna get signed. So he's probably gonna get signed at some point over the next week or so. But Burrow's out there. It sounds like Nick Bosa is gonna show up in San Francisco. I think it was Chris Jones who has been trying to find a new deal out with the Kansas City Chiefs. He's not showing up. Brian Burns have gotten no indication that he would not show up to camp. It would be a shocker if he does it, but he's still waiting on a deal. And again, a guy like Bosa probably playing the same game as Burns. Want to see what the other guy gets, whoever signs first. Just That's just how the market works. Now, I don't think he's going to get Nick Bosa money, nor do I believe he should, but it wouldn't be crazy if he gets Miles Garrett money just based off of when Miles Garrett signed and what Brian Burns has been able to do. And the last guy to get a big deal as an edge rusher was Bradley Chubb, who got more than the other last guy before him to get a deal, which was Max Crosby out there in Las Vegas. So Brian Burns is about to be a very, very, very rich man, but he comes off of an ankle injury that he had offseason surgery for. So he is healthy and ready to go. So excited to see what Brian Burns looks like as Carolina Panthers really fully implement this new 3-4 scheme under new defensive coordinator, Ajero Averro. Uh, our third storyline heading into it is, well, Guys, there's injuries, and there's a couple players on the pup list, and one of them we knew was going to be up there. Austin Corbett, who started every single game and played every single snap until he unfortunately tore his ACL in Week 18 in that walk-off victory in New Orleans at the Superdome. He is out on the, on the pup list. He's physically unable to perform list, something that we knew dating back to June when Frank Reich said on the final day of mandatory minicamp that, yes, the only player they expected at that point in time, to start off on Pup, and he still had to talk to his training staff after that, which we haven't spoken to him since then. We'll hear from him on Tuesday, tomorrow morning there at Wofford, but still, he said the only player they expected was Austin Corbett with the torn ACL. So Austin Corbett is on Pup. Also, one that is surprising is Chandler Zavala, the fourth-round pick out of NC State, who was expected to compete at left guard, could still compete depending on how long he's out. He's starting off on Pup with an upper body injury. I recall it being some sort of a bicep issue, but it's still reported by Mike K as undisclosed, but as an upper body injury that he's working toward, uh, working through. Uh, defensive end, Jalen Redman, um, probably more of a camp body than someone who has a realistic shot at making the team, unfortunate for him. He's starting off on Pup as well. And then defensive tackle, John Penasini, who should be taking in or part of, who should be a part of a really interesting battle there at defensive tackle slash nose tackle. He will also start off on Pup. He was out of football last year dealing with an injury and wondering if there's still the after effects of that are still going on. So Austin Corbett, Chandler Zavala, Jalen Redmond, and John Penasini starting off on Pup. And then last but not least, of course, Frank Reich has taken over as a head coach here in Carolina. He's brought in what we believe is an excellent staff. As Thomas Brown is now the OC. You have Jim Caldwell, Dom Capers, the first ever head coach in Carolina, now working a for the first ever quarterback here in Carolina and Frank Reich. Those two veteran coaches are now here on this coaching staff. As Jero Averro, as I mentioned, a new D.C., a ton of excellent coaches now here in Carolina, a new coaching staff taking over an organization that, honestly, the last couple of years, as we saw, was poorly coached and did not have the kind of experience at the NFL level that now this coaching staff has. And we truly get to see what changes they're going to make as – 
We'll be down there at training camp. We'll get eyes on the team. But also, hey, this is the time to do it. They did a lot of installs, a lot of meetings throughout the offseason program. But this is the time to see where the new coaching staff is going to make its mark. And the one place we're looking at in particular is how Frank Reich, how Thomas Brown, how Josh McCown. I'll even throw Andy Dalton in there as the veteran uh, rookie quarter, uh, veteran uh, quarterback. And how Parks Frazier put their hands all over Bryce Young and be able to mold him and turn him to hopefully the franchise quarterback here in Carolina. So there we go. Some of the top storylines heading into training camp for the Carolina Panthers. You got any more that you want to throw at me? Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Julian Council at me, DM me to get those conversations going on in my DMs and just on the main feed. So those are some of the top storylines, but it's training camp and we're wondering who's, you know, battling to keep their job. Who's trying to take a job and who's right there on the bubble who might not be on the roster in a couple weeks time. We'll talk about some of the key training camp battles that are going to happen here in Carolina in just a moment on locked on Panthers. But before we do that these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. And it's so easy, all to create a free job post on LinkedIn. And once you do, make sure to add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. To spread the word that you're hiring, simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Frank Reich told us back in the spring, you don't know until the pads go on. And we're going to find out this week as the Carolina Panthers will finally be back on the practice field. And the pads will go on later on in the week. But now it's time to go out there and to win some jobs. Competition doesn't truly start until training camp when you have the 90 players on your roster. You know, for the most part, who you're going to have on. But you also got some of those guys that are coming in trying to take a job from some of the players that were leftovers. And it's an interesting situation here in Carolina, obviously, because Matt Rule, no longer the head coach here in Carolina. Steve Wilkes, who was here as the interim for the final 12 games. Of course, he's no longer here. He's out in San Francisco. New players have come and gone here to Carolina. You got the holdovers, you got the new players here. Who is going to be able to hold on to a spot? And who's going to be bonded away out of town in a couple of weeks' time? We will find out that very soon let's go ahead and talk about some of the key camp competitions and battles going on here in carolina over the next couple of weeks down in spartanburg on the campus of wofford college now i'm gonna break it down with the most anticipated camp competition the most underrated and the most overvalued camp competition heading into it now i have multiple actually for each of those categories but starting off with the most anticipated camp competition I think it's got to be at wide receiver. As we know, the Carolina Panthers have a completely rebuilt wide receiver core. Go back to last year, week one against the Cleveland Browns. DJ Moore was wide receiver one. Robbie Anderson, now known as Chosen Anderson, was wide receiver two. And Shai Smith won a job as wide receiver three out of camp. Heading into week one this year, it will be Adam Thielen as wide receiver one. Wide receiver two, we think would be DJ Chark. And then wide receiver three, it's uh, it's up for grabs between Terrace Marshall and Jonathan Mingo, both fighting for that X wide receiver spot as Marshall had a semi breakout towards the end of last season, getting to see some of the flashes that led the Carolina Panthers to take a chance on him. In the second round, despite all the injuries he suffered back at LSU, he came to the league injured. He's been banged up. But once he got his opportunity last season, we started to see those flashes. But that was Scott Fitterer who took Terrace Marshall now as a previous coaching staff. This coaching staff, as Mike K, we had on last week with the Charlotte Observer, they've taken Jonathan Mingo, someone who they really enjoyed meeting with leading up to the draft. They took Mingo in the second round, two years after the Panthers took Terrace Marshall in the second round, and it feels like Mingo is going to have an opportunity to potentially win that spot at X wide receiver as a starter for the Carolina Panthers heading into week one. And when Frank Reich was asked about it, back during mandatory minicamp, you know, who's some of the players that really stood out to you 
He didn't want to name any names, but he did name names. And one of the names was Jonathan Mingo. So we're looking at that, that third wide receiver spot, that X spot, that competition between Terrace Marshall Jr. and Jonathan Mingo. There's also another competition there at wide receiver. It's probably for the final spot. As I look at it right now, tomorrow on Lockdown Panthers, I'm going to give you my 53-man roster projection heading into training camp. I will update it once we get right before cutdowns, but I'm going to give you my 53-man projections heading into camp. Right now for me, just to give you a little taste, I do believe that Adam Thielen will be on the roster. I'm very confident that's going to happen. I do believe that DJ Chark, of course, this is all based off of them being healthy. We saw last year a quarterback, did not think that um, – P.J. Walker would be on the roster, but with injuries to Sam Darnold and Matt Corral, oh my God, he's QB2, and he actually started some games. So things can change based off of injuries. But right now, I look at Adam Thielen being on the roster. Duh. DJ Chark on the roster as well. Terrace Marshall on the roster. Jonathan Mingo, who they just drafted, on the roster. That means there's probably like one, maybe two spots. I would think probably six receivers that are battling to be the final roster spot between Shai Smith, Mir Bird, Lavishka Chenault. Those are the three guys I'm mainly looking at. Of course, Marquez Stevenson, and we'll talk about him a little bit later, could make it based off of special teams. But for the final, just pure receiver slot, I feel like it's between Shai, Demir Bird, and Lavishka Chenault. Now, Shai Smith struggled after becoming that starting wide receiver in that slot position last year with drops, and then it wasn't great either when it came to special teams. So it's going to be tough for him. And then his fellow Gamecock, now his elder Gamecock, and Demir Bird. He's also now here in Carolina. A lot of Gamecocks here, by the way. You got Josh Fan as well, um, who's in on the roster with an opportunity to try and make it. Probably worth practice squad guy. Either way, Demir Bird, who has a, the ability to be a returner, hasn't done that much in his career. Started up his career, of course, here in Carolina. He's bounced around the league. Burned us last year in Atlanta in that wild game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. He was brought in by the staff. You don't think they brought him in not to keep him on the roster, so we'll see what happens there. Lavishka Chenault was someone who was poorly utilized last year. Not quite sure what he can truly do. Um, as far as like if he's a high-level NFL player, but he feels like someone who comes in, shows his worth, will be on the roster this upcoming season. So the most anticipated camp competition to me is right out right there in that wide receiver room. Now, most underrated camp competition. I talked about it a couple weeks ago um, when the Panthers signed Taylor Stallworth right there at defensive tackle really on the defensive line. The Carolina Panthers had to bring in some bodies once they wanted to move to this new 3-4 scheme. Derek Brown's back. They brought back Henry Anderson, Inish, um, Shai Tuttle. Also, you got a player in Deshaun Williams, who's a veteran who's been in this defensive scheme with the Jero Rivera last year in Denver. Those four guys feel pretty comfortably on the roster. But I think there might be two more spots there on the D-line that are up for grabs. And there's a couple guys that have been here before and some new guys here in Carolina. You got Bravion Roy, who was drafted by the rule regime, has been a solid backup the last couple seasons. Marquand McCall, who came out and won a job in camp last year, really showed some signs throughout the entire season. He's back after being a one first year player out of Kentucky. John Penasini mentioned him, a veteran who was out of football last year, dealing with an injury. He came, he came back, but he's starting off camp on the pup list. We'll see how that impacts his chances based on how long he's out. And Taylor Stallworth, who played two seasons in Indianapolis with Frank Reich, got to feel pretty confident about his position may, being able to make it on the defensive line. So that's something that's underrated because you wouldn't look at those guys. But now in this new three-man, odd-man front, you're going to have to have more bodies, especially some experienced guys. And they show that they want more experience by bringing in a guy like Taylor Stallworth. So what does that mean for Bravion Roy? who was a rule player at Baylor, a rule player in the NFL, and now someone who, of course, does not have Matt Rule coaching him anymore. Um, the other one I'm looking at, cornerback. Now, more so towards the end. I've talked about throughout the offseason how the Panthers are very thin at outside corner and that they have not had guys like C.J. Henderson or Keith Taylor really step up for them when J.C. Horn and Dante Jackson have gone out, in particular when J.C. Horn has been out the last two seasons. Keith Taylor, he has struggled as well, and he needs to play better for the Carolina Panthers. And I look at him as somebody who probably is in position to potentially lose his job this upcoming year if he's not able to show more in training camp and in the preseason. Now, I say C.J. Henderson's safe right now because Henderson, they invested more. He's a former first-round pick, and those guys just get more leeway, and he probably still is their third corner on the roster heading into camp and heading into the season at this point in time. But Keith Taylor... He's going to have to fight off 
Stan Thomas Oliver, who Dante Jackson had a lot of good things to say about coming out of training camp or out of OTA's mandatory minicamp. And Stan Thomas Oliver, as we've seen, has made this roster as a seventh round pick out of FIU based off of special teams. Can Keith Taylor be able to do that as well? Not quite sure. Then there's Rajon Wright, who was a last chance you, um, you know, TV star and then went to Oregon State, played well, and is someone who fits the mold of the kind of players they're looking for there on the outside at cornerback. He's someone who could come in and take Keith Taylor's job. So Keith Taylor, Stan Thomas Oliver, Ray John Wright, those guys battling probably for the last two, maybe one spot there in the secondary at corner. So that's one of the most underrated camp competitions heading into camp. Now, the most overvalued camp competition. Uh, for me, I feel like it's returner. Uh, like Raheem Blackshear, he's going to be back. Looks like he's the odds on favor to be at least the kick returner. He did a really good job with that, which is awesome. But now to kind of the rule changes. Does it even matter? I know it, of course, depends on Chris Tabor, the special teams coordinator here in Carolina and what his philosophy is and whether he thinks that they should return. I guess he probably would. I think the smarter money is just, Hey, fair catch, get the ball to 25 or whatever it is. Um, but there's some, but maybe they might they might not do that. Just looking at the rule changes, how the NFL has gone about things, trying to make kickoffs and punt returns safer, which is not even possible in an inherently dangerous game that football is. Uh, it doesn't make a ton of sense for a team to really value the return game that much. Just find somebody out there who can catch the ball. And that's really what a punt returner has become. And especially here in Carolina, where they struggle with that last year and really the last couple of seasons, they have not been able to find a punt returner who's just absolutely reliable I don't know how important it really is at the return spot. So Raheem Blackshear, I feel like he's on the roster, special teams or not. With Shai Smith, he's someone who's going to need to find his way on the roster based off of the return game. Marquez Stevenson as well. And then Demir Bird, I think, is also probably in that competition. That's competition that I look at it just the way the NFL rule changes have gone. Is it that big of a deal? The other one is edge. We've been talking a lot about who's going to start opposite of Brian Burns. For me, I just don't feel like the experience and the talent level is high enough to really feel like whoever wins that job is going to come in and make a massive impact. And I also feel like Marquise Haynes is going to win that job anyways. But Gross Matos is someone who's battling there. DJ Johnson, it sounds like, according to Mike K, we talked to last last week, that he's going to get opportunities, which does not necessarily make the most sense for the Carolina Panthers, considering he's probably a project, but an older player, can be turning 25 this season. Then Amari Barna, who they took out of Virginia Tech last year, he's also going to be there at outside linebacker. It's a position where, of course, you spend a lot of time. I just don't know if it's competition that's going to yield the kind of results that we hope from whoever wins that job, who I think will be Marquise Haynes. And I also look at his position. We'll talk more about it tomorrow when I go over my 53-man roster projection heading to camp. I also look at a position that it's very likely the Carolina Panthers are adding to it either in the middle of training camp or once roster cutdowns go on and they look at the waiver wire and they add somebody else there who could potentially could come in and maybe end up being the starter there at edge rusher. That's still a position the Panthers could address um, prior to the end of camp and the end of the preseason and whenever they got to make the initial 53-man roster cutdown. So those are the most anticipated camp competitions, most underrated camp competitions, and the most overvalued camp competitions for the Carolina Panthers as camp opens up on Wednesday and they report tomorrow down there at Wofford. So speaking of some of the players there, who are the players that are under the most pressure entering camp to make the roster. Matt Corral found out a while ago that, hey, man, you are not in the future plans to ever be QB1. But will he still make the roster? We'll get into that here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. As I've noted throughout the offseason and already on this show, with a regime change means that there could be change for some of the players that are left over from the Matt Rule era here in Carolina. Players that were in favor but Matt Rule were here probably might be a little out of favor now that Frank Reich and his coaching staff are here with a new scheme and also bringing in some guys that fit what they're trying to do. So who are some of the players hey, in the training camp that are under the most pressure? Starting off with Matt Corral, who, looking at it, he's someone who could benefit from the NFL rule change with the emergency third quarterback. It would behoove the Panthers and the other 31 teams in the league to probably have three quarterbacks on the roster. And that has become a very normal thing since the pandemic in 2020 and others, some organizations like the Eagles that were doing that anyways, but that's become fairly common that teams want to hold on three quarterbacks. We saw last year that would have been the case had the Panthers 
um, not lost Sam Darnold in that final preseason game. It was going to be, well, I guess it, no, it was going to probably only be two. But either way, going into training camp, we knew that Darnold wasn't going anywhere because they owed him nearly $19 million. Uh, we knew that Baker Mayfield wasn't going anywhere because they had just traded for Baker Mayfield. And we knew that Matt Corral wasn't, of course, going to be cut because they had just drafted him and, you know, traded up to get him there in the third round. So PJ Walker looked like the odd man out. The Panthers' plans were to carry three quarterbacks. And that would appear to be the plan right now. But Matt Corral's got to prove it, though. While Scott Bitterer and Frank Reich have said that they have a plan for Matt Corral, that they want to continue to develop Matt Corral and that it would make sense to keep him here for his rookie deal. He has to go out there and play well to even earn a roster spot, knowing that, well, he's just probably not going to ever play. It's going to be Bryce, and if something happens to Bryce, it's going to be Andy Dalton. So two guys got to go down in order for Matt Corral to get an opportunity, and that is very – it's po not very possible. It's possible. We've seen it happen. That's not what we want to happen, obviously, here in Carolina. The Panthers have struggled with quarterback injuries the last couple of seasons. The hope is that they can finally have someone – be healthy for a full season but still Matt Carl has to watch two guys go down before he even gets an opportunity and knowing that to be the case you have to give this organization a reason to keep you on the roster they already wanted at least a coaching staff to get a new quarterback and you have someone who could be the franchise quarterback they wanted to get a veteran quarterback who has actually played and can be a mentor to that young quarterback what is your role here in Carolina it's, of course, to keep developing, maybe be the backup, and who knows, maybe get an opportunity to start down the line. But for Matt Corral, he's got to earn his way on the roster. He can't just, you know, get on the roster because, oh, they dropped him last year. And as we talked to Mike K last week at the Charlotte Observer, he brought up examples of Ian Book being drafted a year prior than cut. He brought up Kellen Mond being drafted a year prior to being cut after there were some staff and regime changes there in uh, New Orleans and Minnesota, respectively. Similar situation here in Carolina. It should not just be a – no brainer that Matt Corral is on the roster. Just looking at it, it's not like he has that much value right now for the Carolina Panthers. Now, if he plays well, maybe they can trade him. Maybe it makes more sense to keep him. But we will see. He's certainly under some pressure to prove his worth on the roster as the Panthers. Hey, they, they got 53 spots, and he's got to show that that third quarterback is a spot worth keeping on. Shai Smith, also a ton of pressure. Last year, came out, won the job. As that third wide receiver playing there in the slot, which was awesome for Shy to do that. A little disappointing considering um, a guy like Terrace Marshall. There were some hopes that he could step up there in year two, but he had issues with the hamstrings, some injuries, just did not look right in the preseason. But Shy Smith came out there, had a great connection with Baker Mayfield. That connection did not carry over to the season with Baker as he struggled with drops in particular in that Giants game where the Panthers lost in week two and then went on the rest of the year where we didn't see a ton out of Shy Smith. Now he's in a situation where the Panthers have brought in Thielen, have brought in Shark to both be the top two wide receivers. They also drafted a wide receiver in Mingo, and they brought in Demir Bird, someone who could play the similar position that Shai Smith can play. Shai also struggled on special teams, and the Panthers have brought in some players like Marquez Stevenson who can come in and potentially be a returner. So there was a lot of pressure on Shai Smith to make it in the receiver room, but also to make it on special teams based off of how he's performed the last couple of seasons, but in particular last year. Itor Gross Matos also is someone who's under pressure to be able to make the roster at outside linebacker. An awkward fit there. Did not perform well last season when the Panthers made a decision to let Morgan Fox go by then putting Itor Gosmanos there as a starter at defensive end. Didn't get the production, did not get the results that they were hoping to get from him last year in his third year in the NFL. It's also year four. And he's a second, a former second round player. There's no fifth year option for him that Panthers could exercise. It is a contract year. It is a year for Etor Gross Matos to show why he deserves to be in the National Football League past 2023. If he does not play well in the preseason, I'm sure someone will give an opportunity elsewhere. But will that be a long term option or opportunity for him if he's cut from Carolina? Or will he have a long term future here in Carolina? He is someone who absolutely is trying to fight for his job to stay here with the Carolina Panthers. And lastly, Keith Taylor mentioned before the Panthers have some players like Stan Thomas Oliver, who seems to be really producing at least during uh, OTA's mandatory main camp at that cornerback position, even though he's a little bit undersized based on what they want there at the position, but he's also been a very good special teams player. And a core special teamer is someone I would think would still be on the roster this upcoming season. And you got Rajon Wright coming in from Oregon state who could be taking Keith Taylor's job. 
Keith Taylor, fifth round pick, not a ton expected out of him. But when he's gotten opportunities, has not performed well and has not performed up to the level that he would need to to feel more comfortable this year. Now, they didn't draft the corner, but they have brought in some other players that could take his spot. And he has to also prove that he's worthy of being here on the roster. CJ Henderson kind of gets a pass in a way because he was a first round pick. The Panthers invest a little bit more in him by giving up Dan Arnold and a third round pick to bring him in. And it was always talked about it was about the future. Well, the future is here for CJ Henderson. We will see what does the future hold for Keith Taylor. That is to be determined. He's certainly someone under pressure heading into training camp. We cannot wait throughout the week to break down Carolina Panthers training camp again, starting on Wednesday. They report on Tuesday, the veterans that is report tomorrow down there at Wofford College. So all that going to be breaking it down throughout the week here on Locked on Panthers. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked on Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to get those questions into me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding. And tomorrow, I will provide my 53-man roster projections as the Panthers report to training camp.